Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the refitting and repainting of the Skymaster A10. We've got a storm blowing in, in the background. Uh, it's about 8.30 at night. Usually it's not this dark already, but uh, it's raining outside, crazy windy. I love moments like this when I can have the door open and it's cooling off after a nice hot day. So anyways, just showing some appreciation to Mother Nature for the awesome moisture this evening and the beautiful day today. So stay tuned guys, and we will dive in to the repainting of this aircraft. All right guys, so last episode, we got everything stripped down, stripped out of this aircraft. In this episode, it's gonna be primarily focused on painting, mainly the prep for the painting, okay? So we are not stripping this aircraft. We are scuffing it out. We are sanding it down where we need to. We're doing some touch-ups on it, cleaning the existing surface, and then we'll be repainting it after, of course, we get it prepped. So lots of work to complete in this episode, and that is the primary focus. In the end of last episode, I kind of touched on some of the repairs that we've done here. So I need to sand this little bit of high saw down and get that, uh, that touched up. Uh, this spot on the wing was a little bit rough, so I just started sanding it out, and uh, we're just getting everything nice and smooth and ready to accept paint. So I may have to go over this with a filler one more time, or I haven't gone over it yet with a filler. We may have to go over this with a filler and, uh, and just to, to smooth things out. But basically what we're doing on this aircraft is we are using a Scotch-Brite pad, and we will be just scuffing up the existing clear coat. Okay, so not going too crazy. The one thing you gotta be careful of on an aircraft like this is getting rid of all of the detail, okay? So on the wings, as an example, everything's recessed. On the fuselage, we've got some recessed and some raised. So obviously you can't sand those because they'll disappear. Well, you could sand them, but they will disappear. So that's what we're doing to these pieces. I'm going to be painting these pieces probably in small batches. Now generally if I was to paint an entire aircraft like the PC-6, which I did uh, I think about a year and a bit ago, um, I actually built a temporary spray booth. So I don't have a spray booth. Maybe in the new shop we'll have a spray booth. I've got the fan for a spray booth. But generally what I'll do is I'll build a temporary spray booth uh, just using a, in my, in my previous shop, it was part of the structure. I just set up plastic, set up a fan, and uh, intake filters, exhaust filters, all that kind of stuff. Works out well. Um, we're not going to be doing a spray booth. We'll be doing a very small version of it. And um, so we're going to keep things quite simple on this repaint because uh, that's just what we're going to do. So as I mentioned in the previous video, the first video of this refit and refinish of this aircraft, there's lots of different ways to accomplish this guys. Lots of different products you can use. So use whatever. My way is not necessarily right. It's just the way I do things. So I'll cover with you the products that I've picked up already for this aircraft. So where I go to here in Calgary and you've got auto body places all over but uh, I'm not affiliated with these guys, but I go to Advanced Auto Color because it's convenient for me and they're close to my, uh, my office. So um, yeah, so basically what we're using is we're using premixed spray bombs, okay? So our clear is the Spraymax 2K Clear Matte. Okay, it's not a flat finish. If you look at the scale pictures of the A10 in the Black Snake scheme, it's a matte finish. It's not a flat finish. It's got just a little bit of sheen to it. So that's what we're using. And then we've got uh, stock black, 
which is the same thing. They've mixed this. They put it in spray bombs for me. The reason I got it in spray bombs versus using my equipment is this is just easier on a repaint like this. Um, you know, you can do small parts. You can do uh, one wing and then the cells at, at one time and not have to mix and spray and, and clean up equipment. That's the reason I'm going this route. Also on, on scale aircraft, I mean, you're not going for that mirror finish. So that's why I like to use spray bombs with a scale, uh, scale aircraft. So that's the, uh, the black and then we're using the, the same product, but this is the, uh, the gray color, which is, um, I don't know if this is going to mean anything to you guys, but I'll show it just so it's documented. That is the color formula for the gray that we're using. So, that's the products that we're using. Um, obviously masking tape, we're gonna be cleaning the aircraft. Uh, we're using 3M uh, Soft Edge. Uh, I'll be back in a second. So you're using the 3M Soft Foam Tape. That's what it looks like there. Um, I like this stuff while well, it's pretty much necessary when you're doing a scale aircraft and it's the right product to be using for uh, the camouflage lines and things like that. So it does, if you're not familiar with this, with this product, it does have a, an adhesive on it. So what you can do is you can uh, mold that to follow your uh, camouflage lines and then you just prep off of the foam masking tape. So what does that mean for this aircraft? It means that we are going to be painting the lighter gray Okay, the, the new scale lighter gray first, and then we'll be painting the black afterwards. So when I do paint the new lighter gray, I'm not gonna do any masking for the black. All I'm doing is spraying in that area. I mean, I'm not gonna spray in this area, okay? And then what I'm gonna do after I get the light gray on is come in and prep these areas out with my soft masking tape prep this direction and we're spraying the black, okay? So that's the, gonna be the process for the painting on this aircraft. Okay guys, so generally I would I probably use polyester filler because it's quick, but uh, I actually am out right now because my little hardener bottle broke open. So I'm just using some 30 minute slow cure epoxy. Obviously this won't be ready till tomorrow. And then we're just adding some micro balloons to it to, uh, to make it more sandable. Again, you don't always have to do things one way. There's lots of different ways to do it. And of course, Trusty is helping us out because it's the best epoxy mixing tool around, along with many other things. So I'll just mix this up to a nice paste, and then we will, uh, I've already mixed the epoxy as well too, before you add the micro balloons. So now we've got a nice sandable paste and uh, the only downside to doing this method is obviously the, the waiting time. So when we, when we put this on, whoops, when we put this on, we'll have to let it cure and that's basically a tomorrow thing. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more micro balloons because it's a little bit runny for my taste. And in the past, I have used things like high sol as well too. That works fine. Uh, not as sandable as this mixture right here. There we go. So that business card that uh, I showed you in the last clip there for the place where I got the auto body paints, that's gonna be a perfect spreader for this material. Okay guys, so um, I'm using the business card from the paint supplier. Just put a strip on there and we're just spreading it out over the entire area. Most of it's gonna be sanded off anyways, so not a big deal. There we go. So we've basically skimmed over the entire uh, kind of, I guess call it a damaged area on the wing. And uh, once this cures tomorrow, we will be able to sand it out. We've avoided any of the panel lines there as well. And uh, that is fine. So that's basically all I needed that mix for. And uh, I'm gonna move on to sanding this area. 
uh, that we filled yesterday with high sol. I'm just going to use my Dremel to knock this down and, uh, and get it sanded out. And then while I've got this stuff mixed, I'll still be able to, uh, to fill that in if needed. I talk about this quite often, but generally I'll always try and batch my, um, my gluing jobs. So if I've got high sol things, I'll try and do as many at once as possible, whether it's on one project or multiple projects, uh, just to help uh, make that stuff go as far as possible. So I'll sand, I mean, and I could have done this ahead of time, but I'll sand this out. And uh, if I need to do any filling on that other piece, I've got the material already mixed, ready to go. All right, guys, when you're painting outside, a morning like this morning is perfect. You have zero wind, it's nice and warm outside. And uh, this is the uh, ideal morning to be painting outside. So I know some people will cringe and say it's not a controlled environment and all that stuff. Well, it's, uh, it's 20 degrees Celsius this morning, which is like 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, not a lick of wind outside. We've got the vertical stabs prepped and ready to go. And basically we're going to, uh, to get these painted. So that's the other reason to do uh, with, with scale stuff, why I like to use the spray bombs because you can do small batches. So we can knock these, uh, these verticals off this morning and uh, get them painted. They're all black, so it's one simple color and uh, nice and simple. So uh, we're gonna get the verticals painted and I'll show you the final results. Uh, one of the other things I forgot to show you was these cans that I get from my auto, uh, auto paint supply place. They actually have a valve on them so you can see the plus and the minus there with the red lever. So you can actually control the amount that comes out which is also really nice. So um, ask your, uh, your supplier I guess if, uh, if they've got that. All right guys, and there is the black. We've got two coats on there. And with the black, it dries almost, uh, I'm gonna say instantly, it's not true, but it dries really, really quick. So uh, that's basically the process. I um, used almost one spray bomb to do two coats on those black fins, just to give you an idea of coverage. And I've got four cans and four cans, so I think that's gonna be plenty for our needs. All right guys, and earlier in the video, I showed you the dark gray paint color. And like I tell you, I share the good and the bad with you. This isn't really a big deal, but anyways, uh, earlier, it's evening now. Earlier this morning, I got the, um, the horizontal stab all prepped, ready to go. Had it outside, started spraying it, and I was like, yeah, this is not the right color. So the color that actually came out of the spray bombs was like a silver, like the little mini MIG here. It was definitely the wrong color. Anyway, so ended up going back to the paint store this morning and uh, told them what had happened. I actually kept the silver because it's a really nice silver, but uh, yeah, it was definitely the wrong color. So here is the formula stuff for the paint that we got mixed up. So so someone somewhere a few months ago or a couple months ago, they ended up with my dark gray and they probably went to go paint their car part or whatever they're painting. And uh, they're like, what the heck? This isn't silver. So we got it all solved. Uh, horizontal stab got painted this morning and it was fine, easy peasy, nothing, uh, nothing abnormal, nothing weird. So we've got the the verticals or the rudders painted and the horizontal stab painted. Now I started with those parts because they were easy. They're one solid color, they're fairly small, easy to manage, easy to deal with. That's why I started with those pieces. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna uh, get a couple more things prepped tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, and we will uh, we'll get something else painted tomorrow morning and just continue this process until we're done. Uh, all the pieces. So what we're doing now tonight is getting this wing ready. So yesterday we filled in our uh, micro balloons and West Systems epoxy mix here, sanded down our high saw and I did a little bit of filling and we've got a little bit of uh, sanding to do there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the both wings prepped next 
to, to get those sprayed probably tomorrow morning. All right, so left wing is all prepped and ready to go. We sanded the leading edge there on the repairs that we did. The end pieces are all prepped off with masking tape. And we have used the Scotch-Brite pad and sanded the entire surface. Uh, top and bottom. So we've also prepped off the root of the wing there. And then you can see on the bottom there, we've prepped off all the airlines for the, uh, the landing gear. And a couple points here with the, uh, the aileron. So what I actually did was ended up using thick CA and just put a drop right here and uh, some kicker, stuck that together. So now it's uh, nice and solid. The double-sided tape was okay, but there was a bit of a separation there and I wasn't a fan of it. Um, I cut off some of the 3M sticky uh, prep tape. I just basically cut it in half and we jammed that in a little gap right there, which worked out good. And then we also prepped off the foil scale detail here on the aileron slash air brake. So we just taped those off. When we did the elevators, um, I didn't have to prepped them because the servo was holding that in place and that worked out good. So that's what the underside looks like there and it's ready to go. So we're gonna paint this tomorrow morning, uh, assuming the weather is good. So all we need to do at that point is give it a wipe down with some rubbing alcohol just to clean it up and get rid of the dust, wipe it off with some tack cloth and then we are good to go. So we're gonna prep the other wing now uh, in the same fashion. All right guys, so this morning we got the gear pods painted up. So those are done and uh, they're pretty simple. They're one single color, the lighter gray. Uh, the one tip on, uh, I think it's the right side, uh, that gets painted black. So that will do afterwards as well. So those are done. And then also our flaps got painted as well too. So the two, um, I think the inboard flaps, which are those guys, they are gray on both sides of the flaps. These ones here, because of the scheme layout, the top side is black and the underside is gray. So flaps are all done as well too. So as far as what's left, we basically have the fuselage left to do and then a couple little uh, bits and bites here and there, but uh, the fuselage is the big one left. What I'm doing with the fuselage is I wanted to, number one, it's not prepped, but number two, I needed to make sure that I had enough paint to get everything done. So we still have uh, two and a half cans of the black, which is gonna be plenty to do the fuselage and I think the wing panels and details and stuff, but I'm probably gonna get one more can of the black and we're almost out of the gray. So we do need to get two more cans of the gray because we've got the fuselage rear section there to do. So I just wanna make sure that we have enough. So anyways, that's uh, kind of where we're at. I'll be going to the paint store tomorrow to pick up some more paint and then we'll get this guy prepped and ready to go. All right, if you're an avid watcher of the channel, you may realize or recognize that we got rid of the big pile of crap in the corner. Uh, put doors on the cabinets, it looks awesome. Got all my screws organized, looks great. All right, so we are moving on to the fuselage, guys. We did get our replacement paint order, which is in that box there. So we do have all of the paint and everything we need now to finish this aircraft. So we're moving on to the fuselage. The fuselage gets a little bit complicated because it's, uh, I guess it's so big, there's a lot uh, still stuck on the fuselage. So that is kind of the, uh, the primary issue with it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to probably sand this thing down, or scuff it up with a Scotch-Brite pad, uh, give it a wipe down with rubbing alcohol just initially here. And then we're gonna go in and start prepping things off like the formation lights, everything that needs to be prepped off. So that's uh, the next thing I'm working on. Uh, my goal is tomorrow morning, uh, before we head to the event this weekend, get the light gray on the back end of the fuselage painted. So, but that does involve prepping the rest of the fuselage, you know, the canopy glass, that type of stuff. So anyways, that's what we're moving on to. And, uh, all right guys. So we, uh, I'm just kind of working on the fuselage 
and all the bits for the fuselage here at the same time. So I just thought I'd show you what uh, doing here with the canopy. But before we do that, I'm gonna give a shout out to each and every one of you supporters that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you guys so much for your donations. Uh, they're very appreciated and uh, it's awesome as your name scroll up here, whether you have made a big donation or a small donation, every little bit counts. If you're interested in making a donation, uh, there's links down below in the video description. So um, what we've done with the canopy here is I took fine line masking material which is basically this stuff, which is about five millimeter. I think this is the Tamiya stuff. And uh, I prepped off the perimeter first, and then I just took big masking tape and prepped off the outside. Now you also wanna do the inside, protect it somehow, because as you're spraying this, overspray is definitely gonna go on the inside of that canopy, so keep that in mind. Uh, the other reason I did the inside is I wanna, because this is getting painted black, don't necessarily wanna leave this all to be uh, gray, so I'm gonna paint the entire thing black so when this lifts up and opens, it's not gray on the underside. So that's the canopy stuff. And also we've done some filling on the fuselage here, just little pieces that needed to be filled. We've got a couple little indents and things like that. So I use polyester filler. Actually, this is Bondo, which is really the same thing. It's just a little bit uh, not as quite, not quite as sandable. And other thing we're doing on the aircraft is we're getting rid of the, the, I think it's the targeting pod that hangs down on the older A-10. Now, when you look at the Black Snakes A-10 or the new A-10s, they don't have that pod sticking down anymore. So I pulled the screws out, filled these guys. I'm just gonna give this a nice sand, obviously get it finished. And uh, that's gonna be more representative of what this aircraft is currently because the current plane doesn't have that there. So now we're just, I've already given the entire fuselage uh, a sanding with the Scotch-Brite pad. Now we're doing our sanding on all of our filling work and then we will clean up the fuselage and start prepping what we need to prep. All right, and we are prepped and ready to go on this fuselage. Uh, it was a, quite a bit of work, just making sure everything's prepped, everything's ready to go, everything's masked off. Uh, what I do when um, in a situation like this is you don't need to you know, put paper across the openings or anything like that, just stuffing some packing material in there is sufficient enough. Uh, this back section here, I uh, didn't really need to put packing material in there, but again, we're trying to minimize weight. So, uh, you know, if we can get paint on the bubble wrap and pull it out, that's, I mean, we're talking grams here, but a little bit less weight rather than uh, just spraying it inside the uh, fuselage. Uh, plug the wing tube here, just cut a piece of foam, jammed it in both sides, and then just uh, put some tape uh, loosely inside where the, uh, the cables and everything come out. So fuselage is ready to go. So this one's gonna be a bit tricky to paint because we have to do the light gray all across the nose, right? So um, that's gonna be probably the biggest challenge is just uh, dealing with that stuff. Um, so what we'll probably end up doing is do this in stages. So we'll paint the bottom section first, uh, get that all done. And then once that's cured, we can have the fuselage resting on the bottom and paint the light gray uh, on the rest of the fuselage. Now, if we built a support and something where we could spin the, uh, the fuselage in and things like that, that would change things, but I don't wanna go through that, uh, that hassle because I just don't want to. So I'll just take my, you know, an extra day or so and just paint this in stages, so. All right, guys, so one of the last things that was completed this morning is our uh, fuselage got painted in the gray color. Uh, the engine pods there are just sitting in place for the thumbnail picture. All right, guys, and that is everything for this episode. This is painting episode number one. Next episode obviously is number two, and we are going to be doing all of the black portion of the Black Snakes scheme. Not sure if we'll get into the nomenclature portion and the clear coating, maybe that'll be part three. 
But the next episode, we'll be getting all of the black accomplished on this aircraft, which is a pretty significant step. Uh, we do have our parts en route as well too from Aeropanda, and uh, that's gonna be basically all, almost all of the parts for this aircraft. So thank you guys for watching the channel. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you're watching this for the first time, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoy the content, and we will see you guys in the next video.